Hi, modern digital scopes are wonderful tools and can have very powerful uh, analysis and software capabilities. In particular, they have lots of math functions. Now, if we take a look at the math function over here, you'll notice that all of these uh, transforms and operators, look at what we can do in one of these modern scopes. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. We can differentiate and it shows you the data in real time. We can actually uh, apply these uh, operators and transforms to our captured data, not only in stop mode, but also in real time as well. And uh, we can differentiate, integrate, we can do FFTs, you're familiar with, uh, likely familiar with FFTs to get the uh, frequency uh, domain of your signal or make it work like a spectrum analyzer, but we can square, square root, absolute value, we can do all sorts of logarithms, um, and we can even uh, low pass filter our signal and do all sorts of weird and wonderful mathematical stuff for this but you're probably thinking well what actual practical use is having something like an integral here why would you want to integrate your signal well i'll show you a real practical example where this is very useful and how you can use this and do it let's go now a really good example of where integrals will come in handy is for example measuring the power consumption of a modern microcontroller like this energy micro arm micro we have here. Now I'm using my micro current here and I've got it in series, a couple of jumpers in there in series with the power supply of the microcontroller. I've set the range so that uh, we're able to measure this on our multimeter but in this case we're going to uh, take it out to the oscilloscope and actually look at the waveform and the microcontroller is actually going to sleep here and then every second it's waking up and then uh, you know changing the uh, message on the LCD there so we need to measure the total power consumption of this microcontroller let's see how integrals and the uh, integral function helps us do this so if we have a look in real time at the output from our microcurrent here we can see our current waveform you can see that every second it's popping up with you might be able to capture it there a current pulse when it wakes up and displays something on that microcontroller well we can of course single shot capture that bang there it is and there's our current waveform when it powers up so we want to look at and calculate the total energy or current that's being used by our microcontroller over time now our waveform's a little bit noisy there so what we want to do in this sort of situation when you're looking to get high re resolution and as much uh, accuracy as possible you basically want to go in and you want to turn on your boxcar averaging your high resolution mode here and we should be able to get a nice cleaner and higher fidelity waveform in there and now bingo we've captured that and we can see our waveform in pretty good detail and you can see how it powers up here there's a little bit of uh you know weird stuff happening here when it powers up and then it goes got a few little wiggles in there and we've got all of our data in there and slowly charging up that'll be due to you know uh, the decoupling on the power supply it's doing its operation and then it's basically shutting back down right down to the sleep current right down the bottom right there so most of the time is going to be spent in sleep mode of course and you can see in this case 500 milliseconds per division it powers up every two seconds basically and updates the lcd so we want to get the total current consumption over that time how do we do it well the integral is the key so when you're talking about power consumption when you have effectively a current uh, draw graph like this it, the area under the curve represents the total current consumption of your product and of course if you zoom right out and you get it uh, over time for example then you're only drawing very small current peaks like that with lots of you know dead period like this where there is still current drawing there but you've got to add it all up over time over one full cycle uh, so that you can get a, a true measured value of the total current consumption and the way to do that the way to find out what the area under that curve is, is with an integral. So just what is an integral? Well, if you're familiar with integral calculus, or if you're not, I'll tell you now, it, well, it can be a relatively uh, complex mathematical subject, but what it comes down to is an integral is essentially, the integral function is the area under any particular curve. So we've got our yellow, our uh, yellow data waveform here. So 
all of that in there, all that area under the curve there is the integral of that particular waveform. And the purple waveform we've got here is basically just adding up each little bit of that as we go along and then increasing, increasing all the way up until we get a total figure right at the end. So over a particular time period, it'll always, it'll rise like this, representing the maximum value of all the, each individual segment, if you want to visualize it all broken up into little segments, adding those all up until you get to a final value. So, sorry, the colors aren't uh, working out very well, but basically that green area in there, that total area is going to be representative of the total area under that yellow curve there. So we end up with a final figure up here from the bottom to here when we turn on our uh, measurement function of our total area under the curve. And that's how integrals can be really useful. So what we get here when we select the integrate function here, we can select our source, of course, our source is coming from uh, channel one, the yellow waveform, and then we get uh, different scales and there's two other controls on the oscilloscope that then operate the scale of that integral calculation waveform just like you have another vertical scale there so we set it so it's on screen like that and we can also offset that like that so we can put it down and line it up with the graticule like that and then we can you know take uh, measurements from there like that if we want and of course being an integral it's going to be over time so rather than just being a voltage it's going to be voltage with respect to time so we've got a different units here of 100 microvolts seconds so it's 100 microvolts over one second total value peak value there over a one second period but of course we don't have one second on the screen they're just the units okay what we want to do first is pretty much get the area under this entire curve here so i've expanded it out so that you know pretty much it's decayed away back down to zero here we care about all the energy content under that and you can see how the waveform is slowly tapering out until it's pretty much flat so you know that's going to be good enough let's get the area under that uh current pulse peak there so we can of course just uh you know move that up manually and just count the number of there until we get to that maximum value we want there but hey this is a modern scope we can turn on cursors and we can go into y here and we can set our y cursor right down to the bottom there that's where it starts and then we want the peak value right up the top here so y2 there's our second cursor value so we want it uh, over that particular time period there. We don't have to worry about the X1 and X2 cursors. That just gets us the uh, difference there. But here is our value, delta Y, between those two values, i.e. that peak value up there, 697.9 microvolt seconds. Hey, let's round it up to 700 microvolt seconds, shall we? Now, if we actually expand this out, we can and readjust our uh, scale for our... Uh, math function for our integral, you can see that we can see the accumulation of the value over the time. So we can actually measure it directly from here if our oscilloscope had the correct, uh, you know, enough dynamic range, i.e., you know, a big enough, uh, a high order enough um, analog to digital converter to actually accurately measure this small sleep current down in here in, com you know, in the same uh, range as our big peaks here at every two second mark but you can see the accumulation and you can see the small step function in there you can see how it sort of just uh, steps up a little bit at each pulse and then it accumulates all of this sleep current here and you get a final value look where uh, it's changed our scale a bit to uh, millivolt seconds here but it's showing 12.16 millivolt seconds which are of course because of the microcurrent we can translate that to 12.1 uh, uh, milliamps average over an entire second but uh, I think it's reading a bit high because this noise down in here it's going to have too much noise 
down in there, which, you know, it's just, that may not be the device under test. So you just have to be careful when you're doing these sorts of measurements to, you know, if you want to do this period here, you would have to sample that separately and add it up. But uh, we're going to use just the multimeter to get our average figure right down at that value. And then, so we're only using our oscilloscope to get these current pulses here. So there's you know, several different ways to do it. You just got to be careful that you're not being trapped into reading that directly because you could find that there, well, we will find that that value is uh, much higher than what it realistically would be. So we can use our multimeter here just to get like an average figure and uh, like over the macroscopic time scale and we can set like min max if we uh, really wanted to and then we could like take the uh, average value 4.7 something like that we could maybe round it up to 5 millivolts for example over the macro time period because we're talking about a very large difference between that uh, very short current pulse and the rest of it so let's just say it's 5 millivolts and of course the microcurrent here is set to 1 millivolt per microamp so that translates to uh, 4.6 or let's as we said round it up to uh, 5 microamps uh, just uh, you know a generic sleep power consumption and by the way with these integral units of volt seconds or in this case microvolt seconds don't confuse that with volts per second they are actually different volts per second means a rate of change you know a differential dvdt uh you know a capacitor or charging or something like that a volt second like we're talking about here is entirely different it's we're talking about uh, accumulated energy over time that's basically what it is entirely different to uh, a rate of change over time volts per second so just don't confuse them be careful it can you know it's very easy to mix the two up. So with a value of 700 microvolt seconds, what that basically means, if we spread all of the energy under that curve there, which we're getting in four milliseconds, if we spread that over one uh, second, one full second, it would average a value of uh, 700 microvolts for that one second. Now, because we've got units of uh, microvolt seconds there, well, we've got our unit of time, one second. So uh, it makes sense to deal with one second from uh, here on end as our defined time period for calculating our total current. So that's what we'll do now. You could uh, convert over other uh, time periods, but it just makes sense to go over a second. So that's what we'll do now. So at this point, all we're doing is looking at the total total value there, effectively the peak value, which is the accumulation of all that area over time. So it doesn't actually uh, matter if we choose a longer time period, assuming that this thing flattens out, it doesn't matter. We're only talking about that peak value there. We could go a bit longer. You can see it's still trying to ramp up a bit, but we're pretty close. Just for argument uh, sake today, we'll say that we've got our uh, 700 microvolt second mark. So that's all the energy in our pulse. So now all we have to do is add that energy to the energy that we measured average with the multimeter uh, over the rest of the time period and bingo we can get our total current consumption. So what have we got here? We've got 700 microvolt seconds and because we're using the microcurrent it's equivalent and translates to uh, microamps because we're using the one millivolt per microamp range. So uh, 700 microvolt second is equivalent to 700 nanoamp seconds or an average figure of 700 nanoamps. That energy we saw is spread over an entire second. So what we can do is now draw a graph because our uh, microcontroller only wakes up every two seconds as we saw, then effectively we measured the average uh, current of, you know, around about five uh, microamps there. We could measure it more accurately and get more fussy and stuff like that. But let's just say, for argument's sake, five microseconds average current over that time. Then during that one second, then assuming a one second period, we've got to add on that 700 nanoamps that we got from the energy uh, consumed during that big pulse when the microcontroller started up. So you can see it's not a very large percentage, but you know, it's a reasonable error if you didn't sort of take that into account. And you can see that that's over one second, and then for the next second, just for argument's sake, we're gonna, there was no pulse, we're not accounting for the pulse there, so we only get our five 
micro amps. It, you know, it's just a way to look at it. It's just a, like a visualization tool. There's different ways to do this. But anyway, um, so we can so that 700 nanoamps is going to average to half that value, or 350 nanoamps over the two second period before that pulse starts again. So our total current consumption of our microcontroller we can say is 5.35 microamps. So you can see that that uh, rather large pulse um, really didn't have a huge effect in the power consumption, in the average total power consumption of our device. So I guess this wasn't the best example because our pulse, you know, we didn't, we could measure it as accurately as we wanted. We use the integration method, which gets us the total area under the curve, and it turns out to be, you know, a relatively small percentage of our overall uh, power consumption, but hey, you know, this is just the technique used, and uh, this is the proper way to do it if you want to measure your total power consumption for your product like this that uses these types of pulses. Now I've shown you how to do this using the integration uh, function, math function here, but uh, as it turns out this Agilent uh, X series actually has a measurement uh, function, not a math function, but a measurement function. If we go in there and you're used to all these, you know, you can measure your peak to peak maximum amplitude, you know, average, blah blah blah, RMS, all that sort of jazz. If you go right down here, check this out, look, area over the full screen. Look at that, area over number of cycles or area over full screen. So area over the number of cycles is would basically give you an instant readout of your microcontroller, uh, of the total power consumption in your microcontroller if you had uh, the if you had the dynamic range, as I said. But so we can go in there and we can choose. Uh, well, let's go in there and go full screen, but then we can actually choose the value that we actually want. And there you go. At the moment, it's giving us a readout of 525 microvolt seconds there. And of course, we could expand the time base and actually get the full figure, just like we got uh, before. It, uh, actually, there's another neat thing. We can go into the zoom function here, and then we can uh, expand that window because we've s selected measure over the full window. So then we could go in there and choose our window. And if you wanted to, you can press that and go into your vernier and actually get exactly the time period that you wanted to so over the full screen so you can adjust that just you know rather finely say if you wanted the pulse you know from there to there or whatever you could go in and actually tweak that and get a full value there and there you go it might be you know 400 and something but well it, it does exactly the same thing that we did before so as you can see, we've got our math functions completely turned off, so it's not getting the integral, it's actually calculating the area under the curve, and it knows how to do that. It's a very similar uh, time period to what we had uh, before, I think. And look, we're getting very similar to the accumulated value we got before. It's 663. There might be a bit error because I haven't uh, exactly got the same period or something like that. But there you go. You can get exactly, pretty much, well, you can get exactly the same reading using that area under the curve uh, measurement function if you're scope supports that. This one happens to, but not all do that. So although we had a relatively large current spike here of, in this case, uh, around about 1.4 milliamps, which is actually quite large for the microcontroller to start up, do that sort of processing, compared to our average uh, you know, value, which is down in the noise here of uh, 5 microamps, which we measured on our multimeter, and uh, that current pulse is relatively high, but it overall, over the span of that two seconds, doesn't really add a huge amount to the overall current consumption of the thing. And yes, with the uh, calculations I just did, technically I should have subtracted the time uh, taken from that, but we were like, you know, the pulse that was only four milliseconds is like a couple of orders magnitude less than the total time period. So, you know, you wouldn't bother adding that sort of stuff in. So there you go. That's some reasonably accurate um, calculations of uh, total power consumption of a microcontroller. So I hope you found that uh, useful and then you can, uh, you know, play around with these uh, integration functions. They're not just there for looks. They actually have these sorts of uh, mathematical operators can really have some useful practical applications like this. And other ones you might get like the half power uh, point in a uh, communications uh, system or something like that. There's various other uh, uses for the integration uh, method, which I won't go into. But um, this is one particularly nice example. So I hope you enjoyed that. And if you want 
want to discuss it, there will be the EV blog forum link down below or leave it in the comments. And if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.